Good morning, everybody. My name is Kelly Maynard. I'm the Head of Distribution and Partnerships for Business Events Australia. Um, thank you for joining our webinar today. Um, we're excited. Um, today's webinar really is a, a way of um, trying to help industry in planning for upcoming business events. It's part of our uh, domestic uh, strategy for business events. And we're hoping to, to give you an update on some interesting product that will enhance um, you know, an incentive uh, program or um, conference program or, or thinking about you know, pre and post touring for events. So um, I'm delighted today that this um, is the first of our three webinars with our signature experiences, um, which is a collective of really unique product um, from around Australia and today is a focus on their business events um, offering. So today we have uh, Luxury Lodges of Australia, Penny Rafferty, who's the Executive Officer joining us to give an update. And then we've got John Dore, who's the Executive Officer of Australian Wildlife Journeys. So two product featured today. Uh, I do want to let you know we are recording this session, so you will have access to this on demand um, post the webinar. And for particularly for any of your teams that couldn't join today, you're welcome to share after. Um, and just a quick housekeeping, we are uh, happy to take questions at the end of each session. So if I can ask you to put those through the chat, block, chat box, um, we'll endeavour to answer as many as we can if, if time permits. Um, otherwise, feel free to, to, um, to come, we'll come back to you at the end. Um, so firstly, if I could introduce um, Penny Rafferty, who's going to give us an update on Luxury Lodges. Thanks, Penny. Thanks, Kelly. And hi, everyone. Thanks for making time to join us today. I'm sure many of you know some of the lodges, but I wanted to just give you a bit of an update on where, where we are and what the opportunities are for business events, incentives, high-end um, FIT, pre or post touring, that kind of thing. All of the things that I know that you are wanting to generate lots of. Um, in a world that is increasingly um, tricky to, to plan in. One of the things that really struck us at the beginning of all of this was that actually all of the things that are at the heart of a Luxury Lodge of Australia are what we're constantly being told in the media are what people want. And we are naturally isolated. And what we've found already with bookings that we've had is people are less concerned about asking about COVID safe um, because there is an assumption that the lodges are operating at those very, very high standards and that, you know, there is an assumption that there is that luxury of space, that the levels of hygiene are fantastic um, and very, very high. And you have that luxury of space, which is very few people in quite significant spaces. So we've been using the terminology naturally isolated. Um, you may find that each of the lodges has evolved in different ways. There'll be various forms of contactless check-in. Um, there may be restrictions on the numbers in communal spaces. That is all in line with what is dictated by the regional and local and state and federal authorities at the time. But rest assured that the lodges are still operating by and large. There are a few exceptions that I'll come to and in very wonderful, naturally isolated way. Just a bit of a recap, what defines the lodges? They are not just a place to stay. Every single one of them is in a uniquely Australian landscape. It's all about location, location, location. Absolutely, the soft luxuries of eat well, drink well, sleep well are delivered, but there is a compelling reason to travel to each of these locations to do something. So when you're combining a team building or a high-end meeting or a board meeting or a um, or a reward incentive, there is something already there that is compelling to do that is uniquely, genuinely Australian. Um, the luxury element is not about necessarily, you know, the old style of bling and things. It really is about that exclusivity of access to place, to location, to the people, to knowledge, to specialist guides. I often talk about a thing called privilege of place, which is when you know that you're not sharing it with anyone else and the reward of being there, even if you've you know, traveled quite a distance is, is definitely part of the appeal. And that is all brought to life by the expert hosts and guides. So this is more than just a concierge. It's more than just a place to stay. They are genuine experiences of place 
And between them, you are spoilt for choice. The lodges really demonstrate Australia's depth, diversity and quality of location and experience. Um, some tools and assets for you. With, there's an accommodation summary. There is a section on our website that deals with incentives and small groups. There's an image and video library. There's a filtering system, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, there's a section that talks about what's included. And importantly, there is a lodge status page. Because we are living in such a radically dynamic time, this is a one-stop shop for you for all 19 lodges so that you know when they are open, what their level of operation is. Some are working on limited days per week, some are fully operational, some are not open until next year. So I'll go through that in a moment. We are also new news central. So if you are looking for leads, for hooks to engage with people, to really get them on the line about this is what this group could do together. These are the news, these are the experiences that will really become part of the memory of that retreat or small group retreat or incentive, then this is a really great place to start. Seasonality, doesn't matter how well we all know Australia, there's always something new to learn. There are over 250 experiences offered by the lodges. And we have put these into a database and they are sortable by lodge and by season. So if you know that you're planning, but either dates keep moving because of borders or dates are set because of specific time that a group need to travel, you can actually filter by season to see what are the really signature memorable experiences that become the, the incentive component of their meeting. What can you do where, when? There is also a, an accommodation summary that really just, again, it's a one-stop shop for all 19 lodges, all in the same language, so that you know what the optimal bedding configurations are and aren't for every single lodge. So let's get down to the nitty gritty and the actual lodges, because I know that's really what it's all about. The lodges are all generally quite small. They're between four and 40 rooms. The only exception to that is Qualia with 60 pavilions. So they really are ideal for your small group retreats and board meetings and you know, senior meetings in, in small groups or for very, very high end incentives. Or if you're looking after a group of a much larger conference um, event, pre and post FIT touring or small group touring pre or post that conference. So if you've got a major medical conference or something that's happening in one of the major capital cities, many of those people traveling to that know each other, maybe they want to do some pre and post touring. So that is why, where I would really look to the lodges. I have sequenced the lodges in a sort of a, a loose um, order based on the times that we're operating in. Most travel is still domestic at this stage, so an absolutely logical place to start is Emirates One and Only Walgan Valley in the Blue Mountains. 40 individual heritage suites, so again, very safe, very individual, very private, but they have a really great um, small group and business incentive offering. They have the 1832 homestead, which can be used as a separate gathering space. They have a private dining room. They have a private boardroom, which I've used for a Luxury Lodges of Australia boardroom. The meeting facilities can include conference room for up to 90 guests, um, boardroom for 12, private dining. There's a business centre and all the services that you would expect from a place like Walgan Valley. Also some great ins and many, many different dining options. So you can get really creative with them. But also it was the world's first carbon zero resort. So there are a lot of, and was obviously impacted by the bushfires last year. So there are some really great team building and small group activities that can be done at Walgan Valley, rebuilding habitat, planting trees, hiking, mountain biking, um, trail running if you're so inclined. At the other end of the scale, but very, very close to Sydney also is Pretty Beach House, which is only four pavilions. So this is perfect for a small group meeting sole use or for a, a, a high-end incentive. You can ferry across from Palm Beach or seaplane up or helicopter over, or it's a 90 minute drive from Sydney. They also have some fantastic experiences that they've developed that 
really anchor the experience to place so that you can have an Indigenous welcome. And as an Australian, I did this and I was kind of a bit sceptical about how would I, you know, what would I learn? And it was absolutely fascinating with Gavi, the elder you can see there. They're, they also have also created a really unique experience with the Broken Bay Private Pearl Farm. Um, so you go, you can do, you learn all about pearl farming, cultured pearl farming. You then go back to Pretty Beach House and can do a grading session um, with or without champagne, depending on how much work there is to be done afterwards, and um, learn all about one of the oldest pearl farms um, in Australia, cultured pearl farms in Australia. Lake House in Dalesford, sadly under lockdown at the moment, but they are super proactive in this area. So easily accessible from Melbourne and Melbourne Airport, only 75 minutes. Um, an extraordinary food experience. And with the addition of Dairy Flat Farm, which is their farm where they now source something like 95% of their produce, there are a whole lot of, um, again, you can get really creative with them about connecting guests and delegates with where produce comes from. And again, all of those things that we're saying people are valuing more post COVID, where does their food come from, their freedom to travel, their, um, you know, the, the sense of provenance, local, 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 this is epitomized at Lake House. So they've got 30 through, 33 studios and suites. They have dedicated meeting spaces for up to 150 guests and as few as 10 private dining spaces, including their beautiful waterfront pavilion, um, which seats 40, and you can see the table there, as well as the cellar for up to 16. They've also got a, a sourdough bakery up at Dairy Flat Farm, which is really cool little quirky space in the hillside, and you can do sourdough baking classes. They also have their cooking school facility at Lake House itself. So really interesting place to do some incredibly creative um, team building incentives, small group activities around a business meeting. Sapphire in Tasmania, only 20 suites. So a grand, again, great for a full property buyout, um, but they will do smaller board meetings. You don't have to have a, buy, a buyout. The boardroom hosts up to 20 delegates, um, but again, they've got over 20 signature experiences that are, make it very easy to create a, a really interesting small group meeting or incentive trip. One of the ones that I do love is um, the, not just the marine farm experience, which I think everybody knows where you go dress in the waders and go out and try oysters, but they have a fabulous new um, beekeeping experience. So you go out with the beekeeper, tend the hives, learning all about the environment all around you. And a really, really cool and fun experience. The Louise in the Barossa Valley, um, 15 suites overlooking the vineyards of the Barossa, dedicated boardroom, over 100 wineries where they have access to a lot of private wine tastings. They can bring winemakers or distillers in. Plenty of space for meetings and activities. Cooking classes at the eatery at Maggie Beer's farm, farm shop or at Casa Caboni in Angerston multiple, multiple activities to tailor into a business meeting event. And only now with the new expressway, it's just under an hour from Adelaide Airport. Um, trust me, I know, I live in the Barossa. It used to take me an hour and a, I used to have to allow an hour and a half all the time. Um, and again, some extraordinary things that you can only find in the Barossa. So Sepults Field here has the oldest continuous um, collection of fortified wines in the world and guests can go and taste the, the port of their birth year, which is a really cool thing to do and also a great gift or memento for a really special gathering. So if it's a celebration of a particular board member or chairman retiring or something like that, it's a really great opportunity to celebrate. Spices Peak Lodge, I'm sure many of you know Kylie Stever, who is one of the hardest working people I know. Um, they have a great um, set of offerings at Spices Peak Lodge on the, uh, the highest point of the range in, on the scenic rim, 90 minutes from Brisbane. Helicopter Inn is a really wow way to arrive. 10, uh, 10 suites and two standalone private lodges. They can cater for a retreat up to 26 guests. Um, designated, um, designated meeting space, but again, they can bring in local winemakers or gin or whiskey appreciation masterclasses, 
do bushwalks, guided bushwalks up on this incredible scenic rim, which is also a conservation zone, lots of wildlife experiences, four wheel drive discovery, mountain bike challenges. Screw Turner, one, uh, the owner, loves mountain biking. So he takes this up and down, the, he, that's his challenge, personal challenge. Lizard Island, northern, northernmost resort on the Great Barrier Reef, 40 suites, 24 beaches, dedicated meeting space. Um, and again, what do guests do here? Discover the reef. Um, and the marine research station is also a really interesting exercise to do for people who are interested in understanding what's actually happening on the reef. Often compared, I'm often asked, what's the difference between Lizard Island and Qualia? Lizard Island, barefoot only resort on the island. Qualia is part of Hamilton Island, which has obviously a lot more facilities, more direct access from Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane and Cairns, championship golf course. Um, Qualia is generally best taken as a sole use, 60 pavilions, although given the times, you never know what people will, um, what, what the configuration could be. They have their own events team based on Hamilton Island, as well as a wedding team. So if anyone's into the wedding planning business, um, the, who can who really make events on the island seamless from the moment of arrival to the moment of departure, they own the entire island, they run the airport. So it, it's really easy to make this a seamless um, adventure. They also have um, multiple dining options, obviously on the island and while this is only for six people, I have to highlight this. It's an amazing incentive reward um, excursion out to Heart Island, helicopter out, land on the pontoon, up to six guests. It's either a morning or an afternoon excursion. You have your little James Bond moment where the back of the pontoon opens up and you take your um, beautiful little speedboat out around the reef. Um, I love that location. You can't see land or anything else from that location. Mount Mulligan Lodge is the newest of the lodges, opened last year in April. Um, again, probably best for a full property buyout. Um, there's a buggy per suite. There are eight rooms in four different pavilions. It's brand new. It is really well. Wow. And like all of the lodges, it's anchored to place by one of the physical aspects. So that mountain, the 18 kilometre sandstone escarpment that you can see. Um, it is still a working cattle station, but it's also the, um, the home of Mount Mulligan Mine, which was a, an old coal mine and also an old gold mine, both of which give you a really fascinating insight to the history of um, early 1900s Australian mining. Plenty of activities, just to give you a sense of um, the place in case you haven't seen it before, um, before up to 16 guests as an exclusive buyout. Ducking over to Western Australia, Cape Lodge, Vineyards, forests, caves, hiking, surfing, and cooking schools, and vin um, wine tastings. Designated uh, meeting rooms, two of them, plus a boardroom, 22 suites, and multiple, multiple activities. Again, it's one of those places you can get super, super creative with. Salsala, Sningaloo Reef, probably, again, this is, for me, this is, would be more of a high-end incentive destination. The, the reason to go here really for that wow, absolutely never ever forget in your life experience is to swim with the whale sharks or the humpback whales. You stay in luxury wilderness um, tents with direct access to the beach. You're surrounded by national parks, so there is nothing else there. It is for me one of the quintessential privilege of place um, experiences. Um, they do have um, guides and who can who take guests out on hikes, four-wheel drive um, and kayaking experiences as well. Um, swimming with the whale sharks, seriously one of the most extraordinary things I've ever done. Very lucky girl. True North, a great example, one of the best examples of innovation um, over this period. Normally they would be doing their Kimberley series now and then heading up into East Timor and Papua New Guinea. But what they have done now is recreate a bunch of itineraries that go around the Australian coastline for a private group of up to 36 with a really high guide staff ratio, this is an incredible um, full, prop, uh, full charter. It's an expedition and adventure. It's not a cruise cruise. So they now do an over the top Darwin to Cairns, couple of Great Barrier Reef expeditions, and then heading down into Sydney around Christmas time. Fingers crossed. 
Southern Ocean Lodge, I know you will all ask me about this. Yes, it is closed. It was burnt heartbreakingly. Um, but I was over there a couple of weeks ago helping do some uh, clean up and the location that the Baileys will plan to rebuild, but there will be, won't be any news on that until about 2022. Longitude, spiritual and geographical heart of Australia, you know, it is one of those locations that people absolutely must go to when they come to Australia and for Australians who are now rethinking what must I do here. 15 um, beautiful canopy pavilions can be used for small meetings for an exclusive use booking only, um, but is also for pre or post retreats if um, a company is using voyages, um, sales in the desert or any of the other uh, resorts at Ayers Rock for a conference, Longitude is the pre-post touring option. Um, and again, multitude of experiences and connections with the local Indigenous communities and that incredible location. I'll just whiz through these extremely quickly. Capella Lodge, Lord Howe Island, again, probably more for a high-end incentive. Um, only nine suites on a World Heritage listed island. Silky Oaks Lodge will be probably on your radars. It's closed until April 21 uh, for a massive rebuild and refurbishment. We'll still have 40 suites. We'll still have some meeting and incentive spaces. So watch this space. Bamaroo Plains also closed until March in the top end. Only 10 safari bungalows. This is safari in Australia. It's the equivalent of Australia's Okavango. So for a small group meeting, we, and it does have meeting space for a full property buyout. Um, it is also an incredible exploration of the top end. And Arkaba in the Flinders Ranges, which Kelly and I were just talking about doing the walk up there, which is fantastic. Um, only five suites in the homestead. So for a meeting, it, it is ideal for a small, small group meeting. But again, um, very active engagement with that grand, rustic grand scale landscape and or a three day, um, four day, three night walk ending at the homestead. And finally, El Cuesto, 700,000 acres of wilderness, also open until next season, um, 1st of April. Again, nine suites, does have meeting space, ideal for only, you know, between nine and 18, depending on twin shared, um, shared accommodation, um, but also a great incentive trip. So I think I just made it to my fair share of the 20 minutes. Um, Stay connected. Please let me know if any questions. Hope you are all doing well and we are here to help guide you. And if you need to be connected to any of the lodges individually, please let us know. Thank you so much, Penny. And that really was a whiz through um, around Australia. So we understand it's tough times for everybody at the moment, but we just thought there is some great product there, particularly for incentives. And it's, just, you know, good to give you an update on, on where the lodges are at, but also to help you with planning, you know, future domestic business events um, specifically. Now, does anyone have any questions for Penny before we move on? There's no questions in the chat box at the moment, but um, before we move on to the, to the next presenter, John, does anyone have any specific questions for Penny? We're happy to answer them now or we'll I carry will, on. I will follow up and send out an email with links to those specific tools and reference points that I referenced in the presentation. They really are an easy one-stop shop for you when you're planning for things that are super inspirational and super Australian. And also great that the website's got the link of what's open and what's not, you know, with the, with the capacity. So I think that's super helpful from a planning perspective. So there's no questions at the moment. Um, so we might move on. Thank you so much, Penny. That was fabulous. Whip around Australia. There's some really great and, and inspirational product there. So um, I'm delighted now to introduce um, a collective presentation from Australian Wildlife Journeys and John Dore is going to um, give, us a, give us a presentation update um, on some of his product. And you may not know these, this product as well. So we think a good opportunity to update you. So thank you, John. Thanks so much, Kelly. And thanks everyone for joining the session live today or if you're watching the recording. Certainly really appreciate the opportunity to share more of our incredible wildlife encounters around this great country of ours. So thank you again for joining. So today I am going to split up the presentation into a few sections. So 
to begin with, I'm going to provide a bit of background about why we formed the group, um, some criteria, what's our ethos, because I would suspect uh, some of you watching the presentation might not know a lot about the group. So we'll spend a bit of time just overviewing some of the key points there. I'm then going to talk about some of the key themes um, and opportunities that we think align really well with the business event sector, uh, just providing some case studies or projects that, that might uh, you might want to think about in terms of planning for uh, the future months that lie ahead with the domestic market. And then I'm going to provide a bit of an overview about the members that have dealt with the business events. And we're probably talking more, uh, as Penny mentioned, with respect to smaller meetings or retreats or incentive groups. So we're going to spend a little bit of time overviewing the wildlife encounters, of course, and uh, just wrapping up with some of the additional resources as well. So we formed the group around about three and a half years ago. And the principal objective in terms of creating this collective was to make it easier for travelers to connect with wildlife in the wild. So we developed some key criteria and this was largely around the responsible travel movement. So some of the key things that I'm sure you've heard about is this whole theme of connecting with local community, communities and family owned businesses. So that's certainly a key part of our criteria. Obviously having those expertise and a big part of that of course is guides in terms of bringing these local habitats and ecosystems to life. And finally, and I think our most important objective uh, is creating a better future for Australia's wildlife. And we not only look at this through the, the scope of donations, but also how we can get guests involved in activities that are creating a better future for our wildlife species. Because essentially we see it our duty to do that because we rely on seeing these amazing animals as part of our everyday business. So anything we can do to increase the biodiversity obviously is a great thing and a key, key objective for us. As I mentioned before, the guides are a key point in terms of the development of the group and a key selling feature for us. So because we are relying on seeing these animals in their natural habitats, you really do need to get that appreciation of the ecosystems to, and you need that background knowledge to bring these amazing parts of the country to life. So we typically do this via small groups. I'll talk a little bit more about capacities throughout the presentation, but for mid-sized groups, generally what we guarantee are guide to guest ratios of one to five, maybe one to 10 in larger group situations, but it's very much about going out to those habitats and doing that in smaller groups to reduce the impact and increase our chances of obviously connecting with the wildlife, which is what it's all about. Also a big point is our hospitality. So there's some amazing wildlife experiences all across Australia and many of them are in very remote places. So when we developed the group, we very much wanted to have that balance of both the wildlife sightings, but also that great blend of hospitality. So all of the experiences that we talk about today, there is generally a choice of accommodation and that could range from uh, even camping, but generally it's four star standard. And for many of them, we can connect with some of the beautiful luxury lodgings that, that Penny talked about earlier. Again, it's that connection with the locals, which is a huge selling point. And the majority of our members have lived in region for many, many years. A lot of them have been operating tours for the best part of 30 years plus. So they know all the local characters and for the situation where we're connecting corporate groups, that's certainly a huge selling feature for us because that's often a, a key highlight, obviously the wildlife, but it's connecting with those local characters that provide such a rich experience that people remember. Also, I just wanted to chuck in one of the principal reasons that we believe what we're doing is important. And you can see this graph, some of you may have seen it previously, but in the space of 50 odd years, the human populations essentially doubled, but the wild animal population is halved. So as I mentioned initially, we see that it really is a duty or a responsibility for operators like ourselves to help reverse that trend and booking or supporting wildlife operators that do take guests out into the wild are a huge part of being able to, I guess, 
position these areas as a resource that's really valuable. So tourism we see is going to play an important part in, in that value moving forward. Also, just with respect to the current situation that we find ourselves in, Penny um, mentioned before and did a really beautiful job of just all these different trends that are out in market that we think are really well suited to the type of experiences that not only Australian Wildlife Journey offers, but a lot of the signature experiences groups, of course. So it's that small group touring, it's accessing private parcels of land that the general public doesn't have access to, it's going around and, and meeting these local characters across these, these roads that are less traveled. So certainly that's, that's what we can focus on and that's what we really specialize in, in terms of development of these, these groups. So that's a little bit of background about Australian wildlife journeys. I am not gonna cover every single member that's part of the collective today with the time restrictions that we've got. So I've, what I've done is I've really selected those that we think are a really good fit in terms of development of the programs. You can see the 10 members that currently form the group on the map there. So we've got a really wide dispersal across the coastline and a really broad range of different type of wildlife encounters that you can you can provide and that's across both terrestrial or land and aquatic experiences so we do cater to all sorts of passion points in terms of those wildlife encounters a huge focus for us and when we form the group and moving forward is this whole theme of corporate social responsibility so something that we believe really differentiates us is that opportunity for your, your clients to actually participate in conservation programs. So we've deemed these as little conservation actions. So rather than perhaps volunteerism programs that some of you may have heard about in the past, which are often multi-day and quite physical tasks, what we've tried to do is blend a tourism experience with these small actions that don't take a huge amount of effort that are quite quick in terms of duration. But if we add them up across mass numbers of both FIT travellers and also groups, it, it makes a significant impact over time. So the type of experiences could be tree planting. There's a lot of that going on as we speak through the winter season after the bushfires, as you can imagine. It could be cleaning up beaches and discarded fishing net. It could be light weeding for noxious weeds that we know have a huge impact on wildlife. Or it could be contributing to this relatively new trend called citizen science. So this is a really easy way to get involved with important information that scientists are using in terms of planning and tracking wildlife uh, via smartphones or tablets where we're logging what we're seeing and that could include some of the really unique species we have and I've listed some of them in the right hand side of the, the slide there so it's a really fun and easy way that corporate groups can get involved and create a really meaningful impact over time. So I thought I might bring some of these opportunities to life a little bit more. So I'm going to start talking about Echidna Walkabout. So they're a company that's been operating out of Melbourne for 30 years, led by Managing Director Janine Duffy, and her passion in life is koalas. So she's put together a program that studies a local population in a place called the Yuyangs, which is about 50 minutes west of Melbourne. So some years ago, she actually discovered that you could identify koalas by their nose pattern, the, the pattern on the inside of their nostrils, believe it or not, which no other scientists had discovered. So through these projects, she discovered that the koalas were avoiding these areas that, that had this noxious weed called bone seed from South Africa growing. So she's developed a remarkable conservation program out there. And I know that she's had a lot of groups, corporate groups, particularly from Melbourne, assist them with that particular program. So it is a day activity. You, know, you can do longer, of course, but that's, uh, that's one that really comes to mind in terms of an easy one to execute if you've got clients staying in, in Melbourne or, or the surrounds. Another opportunity that you might wanna look at is up in far North Queensland. So FNQ Nature Tours, they are working with a great group called the Australian Quoll Conservancy. So they head out to the Tablelands region, the Atherton Tablelands region, and they go out and 
do these tracking projects or programs for this little carnivorous marsupial. So there's only about 300 of these spotted quolls that are, are left in that region. So we can certainly organise smaller groups to go out and uh, participate in, in all the sorts of research activities that they can connect you with. Another new one that's been established is with exceptional Kangaroo Island after this summer's bushfires, of course. So they have partnered up with a, a fantastic not-for-profit called KI Land for Wildlife. So what we can do is go out with groups uh, to this private parcel of land that's in the northwest part of the, the island. The majority of that parcel has not been burnt, which is really, really important. So we can go out, we can monitor some of the the netting and monitor stations that they have primarily uh, around this little carnivorous marsupial called a sooty dunner, which is only found on Kangaroo Island. So we've constructed some tunnels in partnership with KI Land for Wildlife. Um, we get guests to help monitor that everything's okay with what we've constructed. And then we go out and we actually observe some of the motion detection cameras overnight. And we can, we can have a look at these little guys in action along with a lot of other endangered species on the island that we're, we're re really relying on those, those cameras and monitors to, to work out what's going on. Uh, the final one is with Exmouth Dove and Whale Sharks, Ningaloo. So we've got a pri private charter option with their vessels where we go out and we connect with Project Manta, which is a, another conservation group that's looking at the, the volume of mantas and tracking them where they're heading, not only across Ningaloo and Western Australia, but all across the globe. So it's a really interesting one that we can get hands on and also get guests when they're snorkeling out to help take photos of these mantas to observe them and, uh, and track what they're doing. And if, you haven't, if we haven't seen that particular individual, we actually get to name it, which is, which is pretty cool. Also some other themes that I wanted to touch upon today that some of the members can provide. Uh, so we recognise that whilst wildlife is a major driver with respect to the type of experiences we offer, often groups will want to blend that with other themes and experiences of course. So down in Tasmania is a perfect example with Premier Travel. So they're almost like a, a mini DMC in a lot of ways where Yes, we can focus on, on the wildlife and wilderness aspects, but if we want to integrate local artists or other cultural offerings, I know Mona's a particular uh, popular one down there. Uh, if you want to get more involved with the food and wine, maybe a whiskey trail, that can certainly be blended on a customised basis with, according to what the, the clients are wanting to do. Uh, Exceptional Kangaroo Island, again, they've dealt with several corporate groups in the past. They can do private barbecue picnics in the bushes you can see pictured there. Uh, they can connect uh, you with a, even a dinner and a shearing shed. They can showcase local artisans and winemakers to come in and, and provide talks as well. So again, that, that really nice blend of community. Australian Coastal Safaris is another interesting one. So they're based on the Air Peninsula. And as we know, it's such a seafood mecca down there. So it's, it's a popular spot for, for oysters, um, of course, so they can blend the wildlife in with the, the seafood offerings as well. So just a, a little bit more information about those individual members, a kid in a walk about nature tours. I mentioned Janine Duffy before. So their koala research for a day I've, I've highlighted because I think this is the, the key offering in terms of those, those corporate groups. Full day, maximum capacity there is about 120. So um, they can offer these experiences to a fairly broad number of people during the day. I have listed some of the other regions that they cover, but this would be more on a pre or post basis or incentive basis. So they do multi-day trips across East Gippsland, uh, private trips up to Mungo, which is a fascinating outback region on the border of, of Victoria, New South Wales, and of course, the Great Ocean Road. Uh, Kangaroo Island, I mentioned before, so just an update with respect to the bushfires, because I know it's a common question. Uh, around about 50% of the island was burnt with this summer's bushfires. So essentially, we've repositioned a lot of the existing experiences and particularly the Flinders Chase Focus program. So you can see there, we can offer a maximum of 36 passengers in terms of the wildlife touring. Uh, that Flinders Chase product integrates the KI Land for Wildlife conservation opportunity that I mentioned before. Uh, 
we then integrate a, a bush picnic and then we head down to Remarkable Rocks, of course, to see some of the, the amazing landscapes through there and talk a bit more about the fire ecology that day as well. The KO Land for Wildlife opportunity, we can actually organise that as a, a private experience where we're focusing just on conservation during the day. So not only can we connect with that program, but also the world expert on echidnas called Dr. Peggy Rismiller. She's a fascinating character and we've certainly done that with several uh, corporate groups already and also special interest or alumni groups over time. Uh, they offer a, a couple of other experiences, East End Explorer, uh, looking at the Dudley Peninsula and Island Life where we're heading down to Seal Bay. But essentially, the point I wanted to make is everything uh, can be customised or bes bespoke according to, to the needs of the group. I wanted to talk a bit more about an aquatic opportunity. So Naturalist Charters is one that I'm particularly excited about. So they offer whale watching through the southwest region of Went sorry, Western Australia. So they are actually based in beautiful Margaret River in Dunsborough. So I think that's gonna be a really interesting one moving forward, obviously with the incredible food and wine opportunities down in that area. But it's a really easy one to tack on. So we offer experiences out of Augusta, Albany and Dunsborough, depending on the season. The springtime offering in Dunsborough is particularly appealing because we get to see the blue whales. So last season, around about 260 blue whales migrated past that area uh, that they counted. Uh, but we get to connect with humpback whales. Of course, it's the largest migration on the planet and southern right whales and dwarf minke whales as well. So fabulous opportunity as is the Bremer Canyon killer whale expedition. So this is a relatively new experience on the, the Australian landscape. It's only been off rate, off, offering or offered for the best part of six seasons now. So this is the largest congregation of orcas in the Southern hemisphere, they believe. They're still researching exactly what's going on there, but uh, we can go out with a expedition vessel, which has a maximum of 50 packs. Uh, which runs January through to late April. And it's a day expedition. It's one of the, the best wildlife trips I've taken anywhere around the world. And to see these, these orcas interacting and often we're actually seeing them hunting other whales or marine mammals. So I think that was spotted around 25 departures last, last year. So it's basically a, a Nat Geo uh, type episode unfolding before your eyes. Uh, FNQ Nature Tour is another really popular region for good reason with wildlife lovers. It's the world's oldest tropical rainforest. Um, a couple of opportunities I want to highlight. I've already talked about the Quoll Conservancy, which we can cater to groups of 20. But also if groups want to see the Dane Tree at night, this is a really neat experience where we go out uh, we leave midday, do some nature walks in the afternoon, have a lovely dinner at a wet restaurant up uh, near Port Douglas. And then we go out and spot the wildlife in the evening. The, the nocturnal marsupials all come out. Unfortunately, a lot of people never experience a Dane tree during dusk and evening, which is when it's, when it's at its best in terms of wildlife spotting. But that's another opportunity that, that I think is a really great one. As is the Tablelands, it's, it's a region that not as many people have experienced, but it's guaranteed platypus spotting up that way. Uh, you can spot some rarer marsupials, in, including tree kangaroos, which not many people have seen in the wild either. So that's a, another fascinating opportunity as well. And also up Exmouth Way, uh, Penny talked about the amazing experience of swimming with whale sharks and humpbacks, but we can also cater to uh, snorkeling and dive groups to see the reef or that project manta opportunity that I mentioned before. And last but not least, Premier Travel Tasmania. So beautiful blend of wildlife and wilderness up that way, of course, but if guests do want to experience some of the, the lovely food and wine up that way. There's different private opportunities, Taste of the Huon I've mentioned there, but we can do an adventure of Bruny Island, Freycinet, Mount Field National Park, anything that, that guests want to do. We can cater to, to larger groups with that one. Certainly Premier's dealt with lots of larger groups in terms of crews, pre and post, um, and, and corporate groups in the past as well. So just a reminder, if you do want to learn more, uh, there are our social media handles there, Australian Wildlife Journeys, certainly encourage you to connect. It's a great way to learn more about what we offer as a group. I know that we're also going to be following up with a fact sheet that we're putting together with Tourism Australia and the Signature 
experiences group. So I know that will be released shortly, but the website's a, a great reference point as well. And you can also look at what different experiences are available across different seasons with a search filter that we've got that you, you'll be able to find from the homepage. Uh, and also we've got a recent brochure which integrates some of the guide profiles and some of the experiences in a little bit more depth. But that's uh, essentially it from me. Any questions that you've got, I, I'd love to hear them. My details are up there. I'm based here in Adelaide. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, John. That was fabulous. Um, again, another really good whip around Australia and I think giving everybody an update into, you know, some of the really unique uh, product and experiences that you have. Um, we're happy to take questions. I need to direct you to the Q&A box as opposed to the chat box. Um, so we do have about 10 minutes um, and Penny and John are both here. If anyone has any specific questions, we're happy to, to address them. Um, so if you've got any, feel free to send them through. No questions? We'll give it a couple more minutes, but at the moment, no questions. So your presentations must have been so fabulous. <laughs> You've answered everybody's questions. Any last questions? Any questions? Oh, here's one. Oh no, seems excellent. There was some feedback for you. Thank you, Scott. Anyone else with any specific questions? Otherwise we will, um, as we mentioned at the beginning, we've been recording this, um, this webinar, so we will um, send it out post if you wanna share with your teams or if you wanna have another, um, you know, another look or another listen and I will include John and Penny's details. So you're welcome to follow up directly. Um, and as you know, they both mentioned their websites have got good information. Um, Luxury Lodges have a really good update from around the country with what's opening capacities. And, and John's also working on a dedicated business events fact sheet, which we'll send um, shortly. So um, if there's no questions from anybody, we might, um, we might wrap up there. So thank you, Penny and John. That was, um, that was great. And I hope everybody found it a beneficial update. We understand it's tough times and there's, you know, such uncertainty at the moment around timelines and, and borders. So we appreciate your time in joining. We're just hoping it's, you know, some, some interesting product to, to help you with the planning, particularly for domestic events upcoming. Um, we have two more webinars featuring the Signature Experiences collections um, next week, um, Tuesday at 11 o'clock. We have Discover Ab Aboriginal Experiences and Cultural Attractions, uh, which again, another two collectives you may not know so much about their business events offering. Um, and then on Wednesday, we have Golf Great Golf Courses of Australia and Ultimate Wineries of Australia. So some really unique and, and great product um, for business events. Um, so there next week, um, we will yeah leave it there i think if there's no other questions um thank you everyone for your time and again thank you thank you penny and john and we look forward to the next one if you need anything from us for business events um please please feel free to contact us we're, we're always here to help thanks so much thanks everyone <laughs>